Hey everybody, welcome again back to the Desert Tech Classroom. Today we will be going over once again the SRS. Uh, the SRS has been famous for many years because of its accuracy as well as its multi-caliber abilities. Today we are going to go over one of the specific parts of the rifle that allows it to accomplish this multi-caliber performance. And that is the SRS bolt. The telescoping SRS bolt is coated in nickel boron. That is a new feature that we've added to the bolt recently and it uses a 60 degree throw. This is due to the two layers of three bolt lugs for a total of six bolt lugs that engage into the barrel extension. The outer sleeve of the bolt allows it to telescope shorter to reduce the length of bolt stroke in the rifle and therefore reduce the entire rifle's length. The one piece bolt body increases strength for durability and houses the striker, spring and firing pin. The internal parts are secured using an end cap that twist locks into place. The various bolt heads of the SRS allow for different size cartridges to be used in the rifle. The .470 bolt face is for 308 sized cartridges. The .540 bolt face is for 300 Winchester sized cartridges. And the .585 bolt face is for 338 Lapua Magnum sized cartridges. All three bolt heads can be easily swapped by disassembling the bolt. The larger two bolt heads utilize dual ejectors and all SRS bolts use a single claw extractor. The bolt head is a floating design that is secured by a bolt body pin. Let me show you how to disassemble the bolt and then we'll go over the maintenance. I'm going to show you how to take apart this SRS bolt using our Seekonk torque wrench. It uses a 3 8 square drive. So if you look at the back of an SRS bolt, they all have this square plug in the back. You can use the square end of your tool. If you place the bolt face down against the table, you can push down on the bolt and rotate counterclockwise. It'll pop up one. If you turn it clockwise now, it will unlock and pop right out. So you can remove that bolt locking cap. Once you've done that, you can remove pretty much all of the internal parts of the bolt by simply pulling the sleeve out. And then inside there you have your uh, striker spring, the striker itself. And then if you just tip the bolt over like that, your firing pin will also come out. So those are the internal parts there. Uh, the bolt head, as I mentioned, is secured by a bolt body pin. You can just use your firing pin or anything else to push that bolt body pin out. There is a large end and a small end, so you push in on the small end and push the bolt body pin out. Once that bolt body pin is out, you can pull out your bolt head. Once you've got it apart like that, if you want to swap bolt heads, this would be where you change bolt heads and then reassemble it just the way we took it apart. If you're going to clean it, this would be a good time to do that. You could wipe off any uh, grime or excess lubricants or anything like that that you might find on the bolt. While you've got it apart, it's a good idea to inspect some of the moving parts of the bolt. Obviously, you'll want to check out your firing pin, make sure it's not chipped or cracked or broken or anything like that. It's usually pretty obvious if something like that was to happen. On the bolt body itself, you want to inspect this groove here where the striker, down here at the bottom, there is a little cam path where the striker rotates on the bolt body. You want to inspect that for any bad galling or cracks or any kind of damage you might find. And then on the striker itself, which you can pull out of the uh, sleeve there, you can inspect the same opposite surface on the front of this little flag piece right here. Inspect that area for any cracks or broken pieces. And providing you don't find anything like that, which hopefully you do not, then it's ready to go back together. While you're inspecting parts, double check the extractor and the plunger that goes behind it. Make sure there's no debris or anything in there that can cause a malfunction in, it, in extraction and ejection, as well as make sure you check the plunger on your ejector. Uh, you'll find that if this spring gets too weak, sometimes it won't throw the brass clear of the bolt raceway. I like to lubricate them right here on that cam path, put perhaps a little bit of grease or your favorite lubricant there, and then uh, you can reassemble the whole thing. So we put our striker back inside the bolt sleeve there. First, we're gonna put the bolt head back in. So when you put the bolt head in, you wanna make sure that the, the extractor is lined up with the bolt handle like that. Then you can put in your bolt body pin, small side first, slides in. Once that's all the way in, you can drop in your firing pin from the back. Got it first try. Then we can drop the striker back into the middle and you'll have to line up that flag piece with the groove. As you can see there, if you don't have that lined up, it won't go down. So line that up. 
I like to rotate it counterclockwise so the striker is all the way forward in the fired position. It makes it easier to install the uh, lock in the back. So we'll drop in our striker spring at this point and then just using your hand, you can put this lock cap over the striker spring, push down and rotate left. So that's in there now. Now all we have to do is secure it. And for that, we'll use our tool again. You push down, rotate right till it stops. So now it's all the way back together, except it's still in the fired position. You can fix that by simply grabbing the, the uh, sleeve on the bolt, rotate it till it clicks. Now it's ready to go. It's cocked, ready to put back in the rifle. We've put a lot of thought into the SRS bolt and we hope that your SRS has served you well and continues to serve you well for years to come. If you have any questions about this or any other Desert Tech product, please feel free to drop us a comment below and we'll see if we can get that answered for you. My name is Jeff. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you guys on the next video.